Hello, my name is Christine Gordon and welcome to an overview of clinical data management. An important aspect of the clinical research lifecycle is the collection, processing, storage, and sharing of data for analysis, which is the core of data management. Today, we will focus on clinical data management practices, the need to apply rigorous processes and procedures to the handling of data, often requires research teams and sponsors to develop a data management plan. Let's start by looking at some of the activities associated with data management and who is involved with these activities. In this first session, we will discuss what clinical data management is and cover what clinical data management activities are, as well as cover what a data management plan is and its components. So what is clinical data management? It is a multidisciplinary activity that includes investigators, research nurses, study coordinators, clinical data managers, database programmers, biostatisticians, monitors, and support personnel. Clinical data management is the activities involving the handling of information outlined in the protocol to be collected and analyzed. A variety of activities make up clinical data management at the site as well as for the sponsor, and these can include data acquisition or collection, data abstraction or extraction, data processing and coding, data analysis, data transmission, data storage and security, data privacy, and data quality assurance. So what is the data being collected used for? It may be used to support the analysis of the primary or secondary objectives of the protocol, safety reporting, regulatory reporting, new drug applications, support for labeling claims, publications, or even planning future protocols. As you know, good clinical practice guidelines are an international ethical and scientific quality standard for the design, conduct, and record of research involving humans. GCP is composed of 13 core principles, two of which apply to data. Specifically, all clinical trial information should be recorded, handled, and stored in a way that allows for accurate reporting, interpretation, and verification. Also, the confidentiality of records that could identify subjects should be protected, respecting the privacy and confidentiality rules in accordance with applicable regulatory requirements. The FDA Part 11 regulations address electronic data and e-signatures. These regulations apply to all data residing both at the in institution site and at the sponsor site, creating an electronic record that will be submitted to the FDA. The scope of these regulations include validation of databases, audit trail for corrections in the database, accounting for legacy systems and databases, copies of records, and record retention. Implementation of new technologies and systems to capture, store, and manage data has led to a growing awareness for the need to document the process to ensure the security, integrity, and quality of data along its life cycle. As a result, the de development, implementation, and maintenance of data management plans, also known as DMPs, has grown as good practice for conducting research and is commonplace in most organizations that handle data. The importance of planning and documenting data management has led some organizations to require DMPs as a condition for funding of grants, and often sponsors or auditors will ask to review this document along with standard operating procedures. In addition to regulations and requirements, the key to successful study is how early in the process data planning starts, the quality of the planning, and the effectiveness of the implementation. Data management plans are living paper or electronic records that document the processes and procedures to promote consistent, efficient, and effective data management practices on an individual study. The reason why it's important to provide documentation on a study level rather than a department or program level is because each study has unique project and data requirements that should be outlined and serve as a record of what and how the data was handled. The DMP should be designed to meet the needs of various types of trials, patient registries, or other therapeutic areas. The complexities and nature of a study can influence the DMP but there are minimum standards recommended by professional clinical data management societies, such as SCDM, Society of Clinical Data Management, and AMIA, the American Medical Informatics Association Data Management Working Groups. And these should include, one, having a plan in place prior to the first participant being enrolled. Two, assuring that the plan is in compliance with regulations and oversight agencies. Three, identifying and defining personnel and roles involved in decision-making, data collection, data handling, and data quality control. And four, assuring data management processes are described and defi defined from study start to database lock and study closure. It is important that the plan is current and versioned to document processes 
process changes took place. The type of research, be it prospective, observation, or registry, or therapeutic area, can influence the content or design of a DMP because of the variations in requirements, types of data, and methods used in collection. Usually the scope of a DMP specifies who is involved with the data handling, what the deliverables, tasks, and processes are, and how they are carried out. Let's look at the different components of a DMP. Roles and responsibilities. Maintaining a current list of all trained study team, team members who are working with the data on the study is important. According to FDA regulations for electronic records, access must be limited to authorized individuals. Some guidelines recommend maintaining a list of user roles and access to security safeguards, which includes a plan for removing access. Organization, organizations may manage this with a list of all individuals who have access to the database and the dates of their access. Though it is not required as part of a DMP, it is strongly recommended, and some regulatory agencies require that there is a record that individuals have the training or the skills documented to perform the tasks on the trial. Description of data collected. Some organizations have a metadata file, a data dictionary, or a document listing data collected for a study. This will include any data that is generated or received from sources other than paper or electronic data capture forms completed by the principal investigator, study coordinator, data manager, or study participant. A list of standards or terminology dictionaries. The use of standard terminology or dictionaries usually is in reference to coding of medications and adverse events and use research submission exchange standards. Researchers, sponsors, and regulators want to know what standards and terminologies are used along with the versions. For long-term trials, versions may change, and it is important to document all versions. Because it, versions impact the data, there should be a description of how the version was implemented for the study, if the entire database were, was versioned up, or only data after a certain date. If using an autoencoder, it is important to document the workflow of how manually coded items are handled and approved. How data is collected, processed, and stored. Planning how data is collected will help ensure it is collected in a timely manner. Documenting if data is captured using electronic data capture, EDC, paper, or directly from a participant, or even downloaded from a device is important. For organizations using paper to collect data, the data will ultimately be entered into a sponsor's database. So determining if single entry or double data entry will be used is important. Double data entry is entering the same data twice to ensure data accuracy. With the increase of electronic tools, it should be documented what sources are electronic. For example, some studies allow participants to enter data directly into a tablet, tablet that is automatically uploaded into a database. In this case, the data uploaded is the source data and that should be documented. Listing data transfers and how that data is processed or where it is stored once it arrives should be described. Data handling rules. There should be written procedures on how data is entered and cleaned for data provenance. To ensure that changes or self-evident corrections on case report forms are documented, necessary, and endorsed by the investigator. Examples include conversions of units of measure, guidelines for manual queries, or corrections of misspellings. Data sharing or access. This component is fairly new to DMPs, but it's becoming increasingly more common because of regulations requiring data sharing plans to expedite translational science and increase knowledge. Planning data Planning data sharing and access early in the study can make certain there's compliance to regulations and establish resources and processes that will enable effective data sharing. The plan should help ensure data is made available publicly in a timely manner and describe the methods used to provide access to the data. More extensive DMPs may include the following components, form design, edit checks, system validations and testing, data flow diagrams, reporting metrics, risk analysis, data exchange, auditing and quality control. In this session, we learned that clinical data management is a multidisciplinary activity involving the handling of information to be outlined in the protocol to be collected and analyzed. Clinical data management activities include data acquisition and collection, data abstraction and extraction, data processing and coding, data analysis, data transmission, data storage and security, data privacy, and data quality insurance. Data management plans are often required and are living paper or electronic records that document the processes and procedures needed to promote consistent, efficient, and effective data management practices for a study. At a minimum, the components of a DMP should include the roles and responsibilities of all study team members, a list of standards or terminology dictionaries, 
how data is collected, processed, and stored, data handling rules, data sharing, or access. A DMP may be more extensive and include other components as well. Here are two questions to check your understanding so far. Can you answer what activities are part of a clinical data management? And what is a data management plan? Thank you for your time.